Hello, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how to interpret a full blood count and we're going to be talking about what the differential diagnoses are um, but it's by no means exhaustive but should cover at least the basics. So with any investigation the first thing you want to do is to check the patient details. This includes their name, date of birth, also the time that the test was taken and the clinical history and you're going to get a lot of information from the history alone but the full blood count should either add or disprove your differential diagnosis. So there's three main components of a full blood count. You've got the red cells, the white cells and the platelets. The first thing we're going to be talking about are the red cells. So within the red cells you have a few values. You've got the haemoglobin, which in a male is between 130 to 180 grams per litre, and in a female is between 115 and 165 grams per litre. So it's slightly less in women. You've also got the mean corpuscular volume, or MCV, which is the size of the cells, and this is roughly 78 to 98 femtolitres. You've then got the hematocrit, or packed cell volume, the PCV. This is the proportion of red cells in relation to the entire blood sample, and it's usually between 0.4 and 0.5, so it's expressed as a ratio or as a percentage. Then you've got the red cell count, so this is the number of red cells in the sample, and it's usually between 4 and 6 times 10 to the 12 per litre. Then you've got the mean, the mean corpuscular haemoglobin, so that's the, the amount of haemoglobin per cell. You've got the mean corpuscular haemoglobin concentration, so that takes into account the size of the cell. You've got the red cell distribution width, which tells you the average size of the cells. So if that's wide, that can be due to things like poikilocytosis or anistocytosis, where you have a varying um, size and shape of cells, of the red cells. Or it can be due to if you have a mixed anemia, so you've got a combination of a microcytic and a macrocytic anemia, which would present in the MCV as a normocytic an anemia, but the red cell distribution width would be high. An additional test you can, you can request is the reticulocyte count. So this tells you the number of reticulocytes in the sample, the number of immature red cells. So the most useful out of these values are the haemoglobin and MCV. So I'm going to talk about haemoglobin first. So that can either be low, which means they are, the patient is anemic, or it can be high, in which case the patient has polycythemia. So if the patient is anemic, the next thing you want to do is look at the MCV. If the patient is polycythemic, you can break this down in e into either primary or secondary causes. Primary causes are, you, are your JAK2 mutation polycythemia rubra vera, where the cells just reproduce uncontrollably. And the secondary ones, which is much more common, you can either have a spurious result, which is due to, say, dehydration, and you have a proportionally higher number of red cells in the sample, so you need to look at the packed cell volume. You can have hypoxia, and this is by far the most common cause of polycythemia. So common causes are COPD and smoking, which are obviously kind of related. Morbid obesity can also do the same. And then altitude adaptation is the physiological response that you get that causes a polycythemia. And then finally, you can get it due to excess erythropoietin, such as with a renal cell carcinoma. So as we said, if you have someone who's anemic, you need to look at the MCV. And when you're looking at the MCV, you're looking at the size of the cells. So they can either be microcytic, so small cells. They can be normocytic, so which is normal sized cells, or they can be macrocytic. Within microcytic, the causes you want to think about, first and foremost, is iron deficiency anemia. And if, if you suspect iron deficiency anemia, 
you need to check serum ferritin levels, possibly the CRP because ferritin is an acute phase protein, and the total iron binding capacity, which will go up if they are depleted of iron. Another cause of microcytic anemia is chronic disease. So here you're going to think of what's in the history tells me that they've got a chronic disease, and again you can check the CRP to check levels of inflammation. Thalassemia is also a cause of microcytic anemia, so think about things like the family history, you can do um, serum electrophoresis to confirm the diagnosis. And then less common causes of a microcytic anemia are sideroblastic anemia, which is a hereditary type of anemia, and lead poisoning. So then we'll move on to the normocytic types of anemia. So here you have acute bleeding, so where you have any loss of red cells, so that commonly things like GI bleeds or in the cases of trauma. Chronic disease again, here we can cause a normocytic anemia. Common diseases, in this case, are renal disease, but also think of malignancy because that can cause a normocytic anemia. And then hemolysis, which itself has many causes. Macrocytic anemia, hypothyroidism, pregnancy, which is a very common cause of macrocytic anemia. You've got alcoholism and liver or liver disease, and you can see the association there. B12 or folate deficiency causes a macrocytosis. And then any cause reticulocytosis. Those are hemolysis, things like marrow infiltration, so that can be due to cancers, it can be due to fibrosis, or it can be due to drug therapy. And also if you're treating anemia, that can cause a reticulocytosis. So now we're gonna move on to the white blood cells. And you get two values when you're thinking about white cell blood cells. You get the total white cell count and you get the differential, which tells you the proportion of different types of white cells. So if we just look at the white cell count first of all, that can either be high, in which case the patient has a leukocytosis, or it can be low, in which case they have leukopenia. With any high white blood cell count, the things you need to be thinking of are infection, it's a very common cause for a raised white cell count. And then malignancy. And within that category, you're thinking of leukemia and lymphoma. If a patient has a low white cell count, you should be thinking about what's causing the white, low white cell count. So that can either be not producing white cells, or it can be because they're being destroyed. The white cells might not be being produced because of bone marrow failure. And that can be due to drugs, commonly, or infiltration from malignancy or fibrosis. If white cells are being destroyed, this is usually by viral infections, and HIV is a very well-known cause of white cell destruction. So once you've looked at the white cell count, you want to look at the differential, and this will tell you even more information. So the cells we're interested in here are the neutrophils, the lymphocytes, and then less commonly, you've got eosinophils and basophils. So again, High neutrophils gives you a neutrophilia, and a low is a neutropenia. And this goes for the same as the causes of white cells, so drugs can cause a high white cell count, as can malignancy, as can bacterial infections specifically. And then any normal stress can cause it as well, so things like trauma, infection, inflammation, and things like surgery will cause your neutrophils to go up. Your neutrophils tend to deplete due to things like viral infections. Drugs, so commonly chemotherapy, causes your neutrophils to be de depleted. And if that's the case, you need to, if a patient becomes ill, you need to think about isolating them. Splenomegaly is a cause of neutrophils to deplete because of their sequestered away in the large spleen. And then malignancy, again, is a cause. Lymphocytes, again, high, you get lymphocytosis. And low is lymphopenia. This is kind of the opposite way around to neutrophils in a viral infection will cause lymphocytes to go up. And a good example of that is with infectious mononucleosis due to Epstein-Barr virus. And then leukemia and other malignancies can cause the lymphocytes to go up. Common causes of depleted lymphocytes are steroids, so that's a common iatrogenic cause. And also autoimmune disease, of which there are many. Basophils increase due to parasitic infections and eosinophils go up due to allergies such as atopic disease, so you can get it with asthma, and also with vasculitis. So that covers white cells. And then the last but not least is platelets. So again, platelets can be high, which is 
thrombocytosis or low, which is thrombocytopenia. In terms of thrombocytosis, I break it down into primary causes and secondary causes. Primary cause is polycythemia rubavera again, because that can cause a overproduction of other lineages other than just the red cells. And then a secondary cause of a thrombocytosis can either be reactive, which is your normal physiological response to any sort of stresses, such as infection again, inflammation, hemorrhage. Thrombocytes go up in malignancy, which is part of the reason why they have a tendency to thrombose with cancers. And after splenectomy, due to a, a proportion will be hidden away in a spleen. For thrombocytopenia, you need to think about whether they're not being produced, being destroyed, or if they're hidden. So lack of production, common causes, B12 and folate deficiency, marrow infiltration or failure due to drugs or malignancy or other causes, and viral infections. Platelets can be destroyed by either an immune cause, you can have a drug-induced thrombocytopenia, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is an immune-mediated cause, and rheumatological disease. And then the non-immune mediated are the rare thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and prosthetic heart valves. Thrombocytopenia can be caused by sequestration in a enlarged spleen. So, to summarise, remember to look at the patient's details first, then look at the red cells, see if they have an anemia from the haemoglobin, and then use the MCV to work out what type of anemia that is. Don't worry too much about the other values in the red cells. Then move on to the white cells, and you want to be looking at the total white cell count and if there's any abnormal differential, and then look at the platelets to see if they are high or low. You'll want to be seeing if all of the cell types are abnormal, if, or if just a single cell type is abnormal. And that's how to interpret a full blood count. Thanks for listening.